Hey, what's up, folks? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us on another exciting adventure. And today, we're going to be filming our first knife review of the year 2021. I know it's October already, but it is well worth the wait. So today, we're going to be reviewing the Wood Steel Knives Snake Eater Knife. Now, for those un unaware, this is actually my personal knife design. You can see my logo right there. And if you haven't been keeping up, last year we actually made a prototype and from there we started testing it and testing it, you know, different methods, you know, wood carving, game processing, camp cooking, all that stuff. And then we were able to focus it and bring it down to a prototype number two. And then we got the finalized one around December. And since December to now, which has been basically almost 11 months, I have been using this knife every single day. And I gotta say, I'm really loving it. I'm very proud of the design and how much it excels at what I like to do. So is this the perfect bushcraft knife or camping knife? We're about to find out. We're going to put it through its testing. Now, you know, it. like I said, it's my personal knife design, so I'm going to do my best to not be so biased and let you guys know where, it, you know, it really excels and where perhaps it may have some drawbacks you know, that you should know about. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. So I have a whole video on the introduction of the snake eater that we filmed last year. Uh, and then I have a playlist of it being tested out in several diff different methods. So be sure to check that out. I'll put post it above on the card above. Uh, in the meantime, let me give you the very briefly condensed version. These two are my favorite knives of all time. After years of being outdoors, camping, bushcraft, hunting, fishing, all that stuff, it's really been, been narrowed down to these two knives as my favorite knives. I've realized that I love very thin knives. I'm not looking for tanks. I'm not looking for a sharpened pry bar. I can care less for those things. I like a very thin blade. And these two just have such unique personalities. This is the Green River Hunter. It's a knife that's been made in America since 1834, still made in America. Just classic, a lot of history, you know, a lot of lawmen and, and natives and cowboys use them and all that stuff. And it's just great for game processing, uh, cooking in the kitchen, that kind of stuff. And I just love that old world look and feel, that simplicity that old knives had. Now moving on up here to the Mora Consbol, which is a modernized blade. You know, it's using, you know, a, a more modern steel, 12C27 stainless. Uh, it has this multi-grind where it starts as a Scandi that quickly becomes a flat grind. So a lot of good woodworking area right here. And then of course right here is going to be a lot of cooking, camp cooking, uh, kitchen use, game processing, that kind of stuff, slicing. Um, and then, you know, it has a rubber handle. And that's where the first prototype came to be the very first prototype of the snake eater right here you can see it it captures both of the, you know the the old world simplicity that rustic look of the green river but it's just more modernized with the stainless steel uh, aebl stainless it has that multi-grind so once again you're going to have scandy here for carving notches whittling feather sticking that kind of stuff and then it tapers down into this flat for processing game filleting gutting fish uh, that kind of stuff or just cooking and then, of course, I added a couple of extra things like my carta handles uh, and, a, and a pommel here for crushing things like shellfish, pecans, that kind of stuff. So after months of testing this blade, like I said, I already have a whole playlist where you see this thing being used in several videos. Um, you know, I, I was able to tell, you know, as much as I love this blade, this prototype, it could use a little bit of honing. For example, we brought down the Scandi portion a little lower. So it's a little bit more aggressive on the shoulder, on the bite. Um, we added a guard so your hand doesn't slip. Not that it ever slipped. It's more that's what, you know, people were more concerned about. So that's when we were able to create this one. And as you can tell, uh, there are some differences. It still retains its overall personality and shape, but there are a little bit of differences. The handle's a little bit bigger. Like we said, there's a little bit of a, a guard right there. Um, the pommel's a little bit more subtle. And then you can see the Woody Smith logo right there, the woodpecker. You can see the fox, the Junkyard Fox logo right there. And then there's a pommel, and the pommel has 001, making it the very first official snake eater. 
So like I said earlier, I'm trying to be as objective as possible, not be so you know biased because it is my knife design, it is my knife, and I love it very much. And Woody Smith is an outstanding bladesmith. I actually got to meet him a few months back and we took a tour of his shop, checked out his other designs. He's just immensely talented. However, I do, like I said, I'm trying to be as objective and I, I'm gonna go ahead and call this out now before somebody on the comments does. This knife, uh, there's a little bit of, of a rough fit and finish, just a slight bit on the blade itself. For example, the drop on from Scandi to flat, it, it was a little bit uh, uneven. It's not as smooth as, as I would wish it was. Now, keep in mind, the knife, in terms of functionality, it works just fine. But I can understand for aesthetics that that may look a little rough to some people. However, it's um, keep in mind that it was the first official one, you know, Woody was working to make. Uh, you know, it takes a while to kind of like you know, get the design down, especially with something with a multi-grind, which can be a little tricky. However, I do want to show you guys, as I said earlier, this is 001. By 003, this is my brother's snake eater. You can see the 03 right here. By the 003, he had already mastered the drop. You can see how smoother this blade is and just how prettier it is. Um, and though I've never held a 002, I've seen pictures of it and it looks just like this one. Uh, so yeah, so in case anybody, you know, critiques this one, just keep in mind this was the first of its kind. But like I said, here's the 003. Absolutely beautiful right here. So yeah, uh, the future ones of course are gonna be a lot more polished than the one that I am testing. Okay, so enough talk, let's go ahead and get to action. So first things first, guys, just so you know, this is a 3 seconds inch thin blade. It is not very thick at all. Uh, so things like batoning, chopping, those were the last things on my mind. Honestly, I don't use those things very often. For me, I tend to use blades more for game processing, fish flaying, camp cooking, you know, things along those lines. Now, can this still baton? Yes, uh, understand that the woods around me are soft woods like cottonwood, pine, that kind of stuff. So it's still gonna function for that, but don't by any means expect this to be some kind of heavy pry bar. But uh, let's do some batoning. But like I said, it has no issue making a fire out here. And now that sunset approaches, the night is just around the corner. It's time to go ahead and get some food going. So it's called the snake eater, right? So what Gorvo and I are going to do is we're going to scout this region and look for a rattlesnake to cook up for dinner. Now rattlesnakes, truthfully, are very sneaky. So the chances of us finding one today aren't so great but it may take a couple of days but we will do so and when we do we'll restroke this fire and uh, start cooking up dinner so even though you've seen this knife already before on the channel processing 
fish and a large wild boar, uh, we want to cook up a rattlesnake so it can earn its name. All right, folks, so it's taken several hours. We were just about to give up when we ran across this dude. Uh, so we are grateful for it. As always, taking a life is never an easy thing. So I would say, you know, it's not the biggest rattlesnake. I'd say this one's barely about two and a half feet long, but it's gonna be big enough to feed us. And like always, we are eternally grateful, you know, for these blessings, for these bounties out here. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the snake eater and process this guy and put him over the fire to cook up. Check out the little rattle. Now keep in mind, this is not a tutorial. It's gonna go pretty fast. We're just testing out the blade. If you are looking for a you know step-by-step -step guide on how to process a rattlesnake, I'll have the link up here so you can check that video that we made last year. Um, that's the one where I'm dressed up like Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid. But uh, that one's just more step-by-step, -step, more you know comprehensive. This one we're gonna move a little faster. Just one thing to never forget with the rattlesnake. We wanna get rid of that head and we wanna either toss it in the fire or bury it because even after death, even after being decapitated, a rattlesnake can still by instinct try to bite if something approaches. So uh, we, you know, we don't want to risk somebody getting hurt, a curious pet or something. So let's go ahead and baton that head off. And I did clean up the, the snake eater a little bit so it doesn't have all the residue from the, from the earlier uh, fire rod and all that. All right, there's the little head. And that's crazy to say, but this thing is very dangerous. I would highly suggest just leave these guys alone unless you're really hungry um, because, you know, it's just not worth the risks that you run with this. You know, there's plenty of other sources of food out here, but uh, just for this time, this is the last time we're going to hunt a rattlesnake on the channel, to be honest. So a few minutes later and we processed the snake. Tr truthfully, a snake is very easy to process. You know, they don't have arms and legs and stuff like that. So it's fairly linear. Uh, the only thing is, of course, the rattlesnake is, you know, the, the hard part's one, finding one, and two, you know, not putting yourself in danger to take one down. But uh, we managed to process this guy, as you saw. Uh, the snake eater was able to easily baton through the bones, you know, through the, the vertebrae, uh, and then able to go ahead and make that incision on the inside to go ahead and start, you know, gutting it and removing all the all the guts from here without you know puncturing anything and uh, it worked wonderfully well at that and uh, we gave it a rinse just to get the dirt and extra blood out of here and uh, other than that as you saw the snake eater excelled very well uh, I mean if, for those of you who haven't watched I've been using this knife for 10 months and it's come out in several videos uh, it was able to p butcher a large hog that I hunted in South Texas a few months back and I mean it worked wonderfully there for that large game and then it's also I've also used it for several uh, fishing trips uh, with some trout with some bluegill it worked very well so of course this was no support surprise that the snake eater was able to go ahead and uh, process the snake very easily that's where its strength is going to be it's a thin knife because it's precise it's designed 
with this belly, with the flat grind, of course, to be able to go ahead and, you know, gut game, process game, that kind of stuff. And then, of course, we have a little bit of Scandi down here. Not too much, but a little bit where it's still going to be very useful, where it's, you know, it's more useful outdoors than, than a full flat grind or something like that. It's still going to have a little bit of Scandi for notching to make triggers and traps, that kind of stuff, or feather sticking, carving, so on and so forth. But it's dinner time now, so we're about to place this guy on a stick and place him over the coals. All right, folks, so as you can tell, sunrise has come. We cooked that snake up for about an hour. It's pretty much ready to go now, but the night got pretty cold. The weather's changing rapidly. Uh, so we got we stoked up the fire. We, the snake's just off to the side, staying warm. Uh, but now this leads us to test number three, which is gathering a cactus pad and turning it into a water container. I think this is a great test if you're out in the desert. I know 99.9% .9 of the times we have our canteens and stuff like that, but I think it's a great exercise for your knife. Uh, you know, this takes a lot of precision, a lot of care, a lot of patience. Um, one puncture into this thing and you got to start all over. It's not going to hold water. So I think this is a great test for the snake eater, especially because it's so thin and the length of the blade is going to fit in there nicely. Now, I will admit the spine of the knife isn't the most conducive to scraping off the thorns. Um, I do find knives like a Kephart style knife, like a LT Right Genesis or Gen 5, uh, much more easier to work with when it comes to this, but this still gets the job done. You get to use the spine of your blade, you know, and just knock these off. And then whatever I can't get, I'm just going to go ahead and singe off on top of the flames. Uh, but yeah, so once again, we're hollowing this out. We're going to fill it with water and then we're going to drop some hot rocks in there so they can stone boil. I think that's a really great method of testing out your blade out in the desert. So let's get to it. This is quite possibly the most stubborn cactus pad I have ever worked with. <laughs>
So in the meantime, the cactus container cools off. I don't want to burn my mouth with those hot rocks or the hot water. That has happened to me before. In the meantime, we heated up the snake again. I didn't take a single bite throughout the night because I wanted to wait until we were filming. Uh, so we're going to start munching out right now. But check this out. Check out the translucent rib cage now that the, now that the sun is coming out. That looks crazy. That looks so cool. So it's breakfast time. Check how thin that is. It's like beef jerky. Normally snake is very bland, but that red-eyed hog is so damn delicious. It really elevates the flavor. It really does taste like beef jerky. Yeah, really good stuff. And that's not even a plug-in. They don't even know I exist, but I really enjoy their spice your spices it's really good that is so damn good earned its name And while we're enjoying our breakfast, time to, have, time to have our morning drink. So we already let this cool off for about 15, 20 minutes. I don't wanna drink hot water or risk burning my mouth on a rock, but I would say it's, it's cool enough. I could still, I could feel the warmth through the pad. So I know that it's still warm water in there, but um, it should be drinkable at this point. Yeah, it's fine. It's like warm thick chamomile um let me take a better drink who so i'd say we're just about done here we've been out here all night we're a little tired at this point so this is about the conclusion but right before we go i'm gonna answer a question that i get very often when it comes to the snake eater and multi-grind knives whether it's this one or the mora bowl. and a lot of people ask you know, the how, how do you sharpen this? How do you hone this up? Because, you know, they think it's different bevels. It's not. The secondary bevel down here is all the same throughout the blade. It's actually very simple to hone this up. Now, what I like to do is I like to use a honing rod like this one. And it's fairly simplistic, folks. Just find the angle and run it Like I said, it's the very same angle throughout the whole blade. It's far easier than it looks. And now the other side. Let me see if I can cut. Now, I don't know if you can see my arm hairs. I don't really have arm hair. Honestly, it's very skinny. It's very thin. I'll check this one out right here, see if I could slice through it. Look how easy it was after the whole night, how easy it was to just get this thing hair popping sharp. So final thoughts on the wood steel knives snake eater knife. Uh, I'm trying to be as objective as possible, but obviously this is my design, so it's gonna, I'm going to really love it. And after months of testing, over a year of testing, starting with the prototypes, you know, this thing is definitely designed to complement what I like doing outdoors. So if you haven't been watching this channel, guys, I really very much enjoy eating like a king. I love to cook outdoors. I love to cook at home. So when we're out there and we're cooking up jambalaya or pastas or stews, that kind of stuff, this thing is meant to be a slicer. I also very much love to 
uh, go fishing and trapping and hunting and that kind of stuff. I love processing game. Uh, and now that I think about it, you know, I've mentioned this before that, you know, I tend to focus a lot more on the hunter gatherer aspect of being outdoors. And I think if anything, this is the perfect hunter gatherer knife. If you're someone who kind of focuses more, a lot more on the bushcraft aspect of things, uh, you know, a lot more when it comes to carving, you know, bow drill sets, a lot of primitive fire, a lot of carving things like kooksas and that kind of stuff. And you're fairly simplistic when it comes to food. If you kind of, you're happy with ramen or dehydrated meals, I don't think this knife is for you. I don't think you're going to need it. Um, if you're someone that's more into the tactical side of things and you want something very thick that can, you know, break, you know, cut through a car door and be used in self-defense and that kind of stuff, this is not going to be the knife for you. Uh, but once again, if you love cooking, you know, if you love a slicer, a very thin, precise slicer, this is going to work great for you. And you still got a little bit of Scandi right here for, once again, feather sticking, batoning, or carving notches to, you know, to make traps, triggers, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, really loving this knife, guys. As surely as the mighty Thor wields his hammer, the Junkyard Fox will be wielding his snake eater. Down below, I'll have the links to woodsteelknives.com as well as Woody Smith Knives, uh, his Instagram, if you're interested in placing an order for a snake eater or checking out any of his other designs. Um, I mean, there's so many different handle materials you can choose from, different colors, different liners, that kind of stuff. You may be able to even talk to him about modifying certain things. I've noticed some people didn't want a pommel. I've noticed some people wanted it a different type of steel, like a carbon steel, that kind of stuff. So go ahead and talk to him, and he can modify it the way you prefer it. And also, he has other uh, great knife designs, as I said earlier. So that's about it for us, guys. We're going to finish our snake. I'm going to be honest. I don't think we're going to drink the water. It's just really thick and, you know, mucusy. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think so. But, uh, yeah, we're going to finish eating, and then we're going get, to uh, get going back into the city. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, and so forth. So once again, thank you for watching us. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry. I'm a little tired now. And uh, we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. <laughs>